Hello, my name is Marlin and today I want to show you my settings for a stable 3.8 GHz overclock of the AMD Phenom 2 X6 1055T processor. The setup I use is based on an ASRock 870 Extreme Free motherboard, two sticks of 4 GB each Kingston value DDR3 1333 RAM, a side moving to aftermarket CPU cooler and of course the AMD Phenom 2 X6 1055T processor. A word of warning regarding the CPU cooling. Do not try this overclock with the stock AMD cooler you got delivered with your processor. The stock AMD cooler will not be able to hold down temperatures below 55 degrees on load with this overclock. Plus, it will reach a noise level that you think your computer will take off or explode soon. Good and effective aftermarket coolers for socket AM3 with low noise and good temperature and scaling you can find via Google. Ok, let's move on. Here we are on the system overview page. Uh, several information is displayed here like BIOS version, processor speed, total amount of memory. Let's move on to the interesting part. So here we are on the page that matters, the OC tweaker page. The first setting, load optimal CPU OC setting, we leave completely alone. We have nothing to do with that. The next setting, overclock mode, is relevant for us. This we set to asynchronous. Zan CPU frequency we set to 272. CPU dynamic overclocking will leave disabled. PCIe frequency will leave on 100. SPED spectrum disabled. Boot failure guard enabled. Boot failure guard count we set to 2. More we don't need anyways. ASRock UCC is a core unlock feature for CPUs that uh, may or may not be able to unlock an additional core. We leave this disabled in our case. CPU active core control will leave disabled. AMD Turbo Core technology will leave disabled. This is important. Always leave this disabled. AMD IOC state support we leave enabled. Okay, let's go to the next page. So we scroll down a bit and you'll see it weaker and continue. Uh, on top we have the processor maximum voltage. This is uh, the maximum voltage AMD clarifies for this processor. The first setting we have is the multiplier voltage change. This was set to manual. CPU frequency adjust we set to all cores. CPU frequency multiplier we set to X14. CPU voltage we higher one step from 1.4250 volts to 1.4375 volts due to stability reasons. The knob bridge frequency multiplier we set to X7. The knob bridge voltage we set from originally 1.50 volts to 1.1625 volts. This is one step up. The HT bus speed we set to X7 and the AT bus width we set to 16 bits. Now to the memory configuration. The memory clock we uh, set to DDR3 1450 or seven, 725 MHz. This is, uh, we also have another setting here, we can set uh, a lower one, this is DDR3 uh, 1088 in the selection, 
this is a drop down menu where you can select this and uh, but for some reason I uh, don't get behind uh, the setting with uh, 1080H DDR3 does not work so we have to use the DDR3 1415 and as we already use originally DDR3 1334 RAM we need to higher the DRAM voltage from 1.5 volts to 1.603 volts to have stability on this RAM overclock. The HT voltage we uh, higher one step from uh, one dot two zero volts to one dot two one volts. This is one step up. The MGPU voltage we leave as is originally and now we get to the memory timings page. Let's move on. So here we are in the memory timing section of the OC tweaker. Uh, this is an important section as we uh, manually need to set uh, the timings. We uh, cannot leave them on automatic. If we do so, our overclock will fail. So let's go on. Memory controller mode we leave ungained. Power down enable we leave disabled. Bank interleaving we leave on automatic. Channel interleaving we leave on hash 2. Now the important stuff. CAS latency we manually set to 9. TRCD we set manually to 9. TRP we set manually to 9. And TRAS we set manually to 25. The rest of these settings we leave on automatic. Okay, let's move on to the next page. So here we come to the last part of the OC tweaker. And here we have a quite important part, the chipset settings. Starting with HT voltage. Uh, here we need to higher this one step from 1.20 volts to 1.21 volts due to stability reasons. The other settings here like MGPU voltage, SP voltage, CPU VDDA voltage, PCIe VDDA voltage we leave on original but set them manually. This means we change them from automatic to their original value as it is displayed on the screen. Another important thing is CPU load line calibration. This setting must be set to normal, else overclocking will fail. With any other setting it will fail. This must be set to normal. So, as we are now at the end of our C tweaker configuration, we can now save our settings into one of the three uh, saving slots. Which one you take, it doesn't matter. Just uh, choose one of the three and select uh, a saving name as added here to for example OC 3.8 perfect or whatever else you desire. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Here we are in the advanced tab in the CPU configuration section. Here we have the cool and quiet function. I would recommend you after you successfully overclocked your system and tested stability to enable this as this function uh, saves you a lot of power energy. Um, your power bill will say thank you. <laughs> um, the other settings, the other four settings here you can leave as is. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Alright, BIOS settings are saved. Windows is fired up and we now fly absolutely crash free with 
3.8 GHz. Link stability test is running. Uh, maximum load temperature with links running is uh, 52 degrees. That's very okay. Side moving tune. Cooler is doing good work. And now let's move on to the next page. Stability testing continues. Here we are using Prime95 to uh, test the stability of our overclock. Prime95 is a bit more demanding than Lynx is because it permanently loads all six cores as you can see on the screen and the core temp display. All cores loaded at 100% uh, CPU temperature in this condition is 54 degrees. 54 degrees is still great. Side Mugen 2 cooler is doing very good work. Alright, now let's have a look how our overclocked AMD Phenom 2 6 core 1055T processor performs in benchmarking. Alright, here we go. This is an exciting result. Ada 64 scores the 1 GHz overclocked AMD 1055T 6 core processor performance nearly on par with the $900 Intel Core i7 965 Extreme Edition processor. This is great performance for the buck. Taken that this Intel processor costs 5x as much as the AMD 1055T processor costs. So if you're the lucky owner of an AMD 1055T, AMD 1035T or AMD 1075T processor, got a decent aftermarket CPU cooler and have the balls to overvolt processor Northbridge and HT just one step each, your benefit will be Intel Core i7 Extreme Performance Level. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you understood what I said because I got a bit cold. <coughs> and also my English leaves to wish as I'm native from Germany. If you have questions regarding this topic, just leave me a comment. Thank you and bye bye.